Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to Stormgate Central. Today, I've got a news roundup for you guys. As some of you may know, yesterday we saw the first ever professional show matches for Stormgate take place at Dreamhack Atlanta between TLO, Moon and Mana. Also, during the same event, Matt Webber, the senior product manager on Stormgate, had some rather interesting things to say about the future of the game. And then finally, I want to touch on the public perception of Stormgate. People have now been able to see some real gameplay, firstly from streamer perspectives, but now also from a professional show match at the highest level. But what do people actually think about it? Are they excited? Are they hyped? And perhaps more importantly, what are the top criticisms that Frost Giant needs to address? Before we begin though, if you guys do enjoy the content here on the channel, please do consider subscribing. I'll be posting a lot more on this game going forward from guides, build orders, casts and news, and I would really appreciate the support. So thank you so much for that. So if you haven't had the chance yet to watch yesterday's show matches, you can find the VODs here on the channel with all of the fluff cut out. Alternatively, you can head over to Frost Giant Games and see the entire two hour long presentation there. I personally found the show matches pretty interesting to watch, and honestly, despite the early state of the game still being in early beta, it played and looked better at a professional level than I ever imagined or hoped for. Now moving on from that, the Play Stormgate website has been updated with separate pages for both the Infernal Host and the Vanguard, each of them showcasing various mechanics and units unique to that faction, so feel free to check that out if that's what rocks your boat. So during the Stormgate event yesterday, between the two show matches, Matt Webber, the senior product manager for the game, he gave an interview and he had some pretty interesting insights about the future and the professional scene going forward. Players turn into viewers as well, and viewers love to watch competition at the highest level. So tell me, Hyoga, what's going on with the, the, exactly. the top tier esports? The top tier, well, um, for the next couple of months, you're going to see a little bit more play from our closed beta. We're going to let people stream some events, even though we're still in closed beta. Uh, next year, we're going to go into early access. In the fall, then, we'd like to sanction some events, um, not so much first party run, but work with the community to really make some cool stuff. And then at the very end of the year, we'd like to have the first real Stormgate Championship, a live event, have a real prize pool, and really just celebrate the first couple of months of the game. So if you guys don't get access to the beta, there will be more streaming opportunities going forward for you guys to watch some streams. Unfortunately, probably not for myself, unless they just open it up to everyone. I have to say, knowing everything, but not being able to share it or make videos about it, is a little bit frustrating so i can't wait until everybody has access to the game and we can all just discuss it and learn off of one another but it also sounds like they're shooting for the first competitive tournament at the end of next year with the game going into early access i believe for everybody in the summertime now early access being open for everyone doesn't mean much if nobody is enticed into playing the game in the first place, right? And to that end, I have been gathering up some of the main pieces of constructive criticism that I've seen from the community at large. So people on the show match yesterday were pretty vocal about what they thought about the game. We also saw a lot of opinions from the various live streamers who got to show off the game. Most of them, of course, are RTS related streamers, but for example, Asmund Gold, he of course is pretty much just a, a very large streamer that doesn't have any association to the RTS crowd. So obviously you're going to see some differing opinions there, which I think is a healthy thing. And then finally, the subreddit appeared to be getting a whole lot more negative after those live streams took place. Whereas before it was mostly filled with Stormgate fanboys, that's not a term to offend anybody who had access to the game they've been playing the alpha everybody's posting positive vibes about it and it sort of turns into this echo chamber of positivity and then i feel like now some new players have started to see what the game looks like and they've come in there with some negative takes some negative reactions but definitely constructive criticism nonetheless so without a doubt the most common criticism i saw was that the game just doesn't look good and that's a very vague thing to say, and you will find no better representation of those comments than on Artosis's YouTube channel. Now, Artosis is a primarily Brood War caster and streamer, so his viewers are looking for a similar experience to that game with similar 
gritty visuals. He posted a poll over there on his channel a couple of days ago asking if viewers were excited for Stormgate. Just over 50% are excited to some degree and under 50% are not. But if we look at the comments here, you know, this guy says it looks like a free-to-play mobile game. It's closer to looking like Fortnite than it does StarCraft. I don't really care for the art style, etc, etc. And these comments can be found not just here, but in lots of different places. I have to say, from my own perspective, I've always been more of a StarCraft fan than a Warcraft fan. I grew up playing Brood War when I was a kid. When Warcraft 3 released, I did play that game, but didn't really get into it as much as Brood War. But then when StarCraft 2 came out, I was all in. I was 23 years old, I believe, at that point, so quite some time ago now. And, you know, I also thought that the game looks more like Warcraft than anything else. Rather cartoony and immature, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. That's what I thought about it when I first saw it. However, I really feel like it's grown on me over time, and since getting into the alpha test and being able to play it, it's really turned my opinion around. I don't know if I simply got used to the graphics or what, but I honestly think that it's fine. At the end of the day though, you can't please everybody, but we do have to consider the fact that Frost Giant are not only going for the core RTS community, who are at the moment likely the most vocal people out there, they're also trying to bag the new players, people who have never played RTS, people who were, you know, maybe too young to play StarCraft 2 when it released, or perhaps hadn't even been born at all, and perhaps they feel that a more neutral art style is the best direction. However, some things I do think they need to change is the visibility and the uniqueness, I suppose, of the units. So at the moment, it's almost impossible during engagements, and especially with Infernal versus Infernal engagements, to tell which units are yours and which are the enemies. You may have noticed this in the show match yesterday, but the units, they just sort of blend into one another and the colors aren't visible enough. Just check this out for example. Can you actually tell which units are teal and which ones are purple? Yeah, sure, maybe after you've stared at it for a while you can, but in an RTS like this, units and their team colors need to be instantaneously recognizable. And this problem isn't only faction to faction. If you're playing as the Vanguard, a lot of the time it's hard to pick out a worker from your army because they look so similar to the Exos and the Lancers, both in terms of stature and walking speed. So this is something that StarCraft 2, for example, does perfectly. You will never mistake an SCV for a Marine. And then finally, the effect that triggers for various abilities in the game, which it sort of looks like this electricity, is visually very noisy and it overwhelms the unit. Furthermore, this same visual effect is used for all of the abilities in the game, whether it be the infernal gaunts infecting people, double time upgrade for the exos, or even the speed buff from one of the creep camps. Now, all of that said, the game is a work in progress. It is still in beta and Frost Giant decided to go the route that they have, you know, showing off the game early so that they can gather feedback and iterate upon it. Oftentimes, the visual aspect of the game is the last thing to receive polish and, for example, that lightning effects buff is almost certainly a placeholder effect and it won't be part of the final game, at least not for every single ability. However, I don't think the overarching art style for the game it is going to change at this point. I think we're too long in the tooth now, so if you were hoping for something much more gritty and realistic, well, you're probably not going to find that here. Now, what I will say is I think people should keep their minds and their opinions open about this game. By all means, if you want to say something negative about the game, you've got to do it in a constructive way. It has to be constructive criticism. Unfortunately, I have seen a lot of comments along the lines of, oh, the game just looks terrible or the art style sucks. That doesn't really give the developers anything to go on or improve. It's just like a general negative opinion that says, I don't like this. But on the flip side, I also don't think people should be running to defend Frost Giant to the hilt over on the subreddit like you see a lot of people do because then you just end up like I said with this echo chamber of positivity and whenever somebody comes in and says something negative they will just get their comment downvoted there to oblivion. 
But guys, I would be interested to hear what you all think about the game so far. Do you like the art style? Do you dislike it? And why? And what else do you think needs to be improved? Thanks for watching, guys. If you missed this video taking a deep dive look at the maps of Stormgate, feel free to check that one out. And I will see you guys in the next one.